Now we have uh, Dirk Den Auden of Futanol. Welcome to Eco Summit. Great to see you again. Morning, Jan. <laughs> How are you? All right, thanks. Good morning, Berlin. Thank you, Jan, for uh, putting us on stage. We're going to shift gears a bit. We go away from uh, energy and smart grids, and, and we talk, go and talk biology. We go and talk about how to turn CO2 from an issue into an asset. Very quick introduction, five minutes into photonol. Um, what I would like to do is give you a snapshot of what, uh, what photonol is. Photonol in a nutshell. What we do, the top picture that you see, those, uh, those small green dots, those are cyanobacteria. Very, the most primitive form of a plant that you can find in water everywhere. We uh, use that, uh, that bacteria as a platform to turn CO2 with the power of sunlight into valuable products. It's a very natural way of, uh, of doing that. That's the way that it has been going on on this planet for billions of years, and we are going to do that and use it in the lab. The second bullet that you see, that's about the engineering. Don't try and understand the picture on the left. That's the, uh, the cell metabolism. What we do, we, we really engineer that bug to make something that it can make naturally, but in a very, very efficient way. We borrow pieces from other elements on this planet, put it in our micro factory, so it produces products by design, turning CO2 as a feedstock into a product that we want it to produce. That's on the science level. Then we have, of course, a production level. You want to, to see it happen. You want to envisage that it's, it's happening. You see tubes of, of water with the algae flowing around, with the cyanobacteria flowing around, making product in a continuous way. What we need to do is to make sure that it's, um, it's out there, uh, that we can pilot it, and that we show that all the important parameters uh, are demonstrated at the right level. And then, from our pilot, we can put it out there in the open and start producing on a soccer field, on two, or uh, filling up deserts with the production facilities that we can then build. So if you look at the type of products that we need to have, if you're familiar in the bio-based economy, this is what you will see all the time. At the top, you have products that have a very high value, but only have a very small market volume. If you go to the bottom, it's about energy, biomass, uh, ethanol, huge markets, but with a very low price. What tends to happen is uh, you, uh, the development and the investments that you need to do for the bottom, uh, for the, the high volume, low price type of products, that's significant. It will take longer. It will take a lot of time and patience to get there. At the top, with the smaller markets, but at the high price, so still a couple of million of revenue per product that you make, that's where it's uh, a lot easier to, uh, to get to market. So we will have a balanced portfolio where we both have the, let's say, the, the top notch and the, the, the bulk materials both in there. That's not something that we can do on our own. We need to collaborate with others to make that happen. If you look at the value chain, that's what I try to depict here. It's at one end, it's the carbon dioxide that's it's, uh, emitted. Um, at the middle, it's a platform. At the right, you see products. I'll, I'll take you through it. So from the CO2 uh, to begin with, the chimneys that you see at the industrial sites, from a waste incinerator, from a steel plant, from a, a cement uh, factory, and this is really becoming uh, an issue. You see penalties. People are, might be afraid that the price is going to increase of the carbon dioxide. People would like to take CO2 as a waste into a new product that you can sell. We talk a lot to people in this, uh, this side of the equation. Then, just as the platform, just imagine that rather than using sugar to, sugar to make something, or fossil um, resources like oil or gas to make something, you can just pick new types of, um, of, of feedstock, new sources of CO2 to make that similar product. People in, uh, with diversified chemical portfolios, they really would like to um, have this kind of opportunity. So that's another end of it. The right-hand side, uh, that's what the majority of the focus is going to, that's a specific type of product. Uh, people who would like to have a different type of feedstock for the product, uh, would like to have it more sustainably, or would like to be sure to have the product in the first place, uh, using that specific bacteria, that's the only uh, mechanism to produce something like a flavor or like a very special intermediate in a cost-effective way. And that's the way that we, uh, we try and, uh, and build that, uh, that value chain. 
Axo Nobel is one of those companies who has joined us to, uh, to use this platform for one of their uh, the products in their portfolio. So what do we need to do to, to make this happen? Um, so for the next, uh, next couple of uh, months, one to one and a half year, it's in the labs, uh, doing the strain engineering, making sure that that bug that we have is going to be the most powerful way of producing products for all the uh, elements we have in mind, to really optimize it. The other one is at the production side, to make sure that, it, it, that we can show it on a significant level. We do that at the pilot, but we also need to do that out there in the open in the field. Think about a soccer field full of tubing, of a photobioreactor, as it's called, to uh, make, uh, make products and bring those products to the market and demonstrate it. And all that needs to happen through the partners, partnering at the front end with the CO2 emitters, uh, with the platform uh, companies, and definitely also at the end with the people who are looking for the product. It's something we would like to, uh, to do, and uh, I invite you to, uh, to join us and make that happen. Thank you very much. Are you looking for money, Dirk? Uh, money is definitely uh, helpful um, to accelerate. Um, our business model, you can do it with partners, so they prepay for the things they would like to develop. Um, in the end, it's, uh, it would be very helpful to start launching our own products first, so to find that balance. So roughly five million uh, would, uh, would prepare us for, uh, for that move. So that's okay. what we are preparing now to, to launch. If you like LG and you have five million, talk to Dirk. Excellent. <laughs> I like LG, but I don't have five million. <laughs> Thank you.